Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and this little video is going to be different than some of the others on this channel. I'm not going to be talking about the art as much as sharing my heart with you, and I hope you'll stay with me to hear me out as I work on my page. You may have noticed that our times are just a little bit divisive right now, but maybe is an understatement. We have 100,000 people dead from COVID-19, 40 million people unemployed, and now we have a race crisis with the nation in an uproar. I saw the satire website, The Onion posted an article called, and on top of this, man's allergies act up. I mean, isn't that just perfect? We have all kinds of things piling up on each other to add to the tension that we're living in. Well, this week I did something that frankly I felt I had to do, which was to temporarily quit my business social media. I haven't deleted the accounts, but for the time being, I just stopped posting because of what I had begun to see in days and weeks before. It was real ugliness. Now, what you call ugly and what someone else calls ugly may differ depending on your perspective. But let me tell you what pushed my buttons amid that ugliness. It was sadly the family of God. I expect the unbelieving world to toss verbal bombs at each other. I don't look to them for Christ-like behavior. But I did have some hope that Christians could figure out how to disagree without just screaming in all caps Antifa at someone who posts a black square. Or one who promotes diversity, shaming someone who posts a police officer photo. I've been attacked by both sides. Very conservative Christians assume I'm just like them and that I would agree that cops should have the right to mete out justice in their own way unchecked and that the president should send troops out to crush rebellion. And very liberal Christians assume I'm just like them and that I would agree that every police officer is horrible just because that's their job and that every form of protest is permissible to push back against injustice. Well, frankly, I'm neither. I'm a mix of views, but I am a Jesus follower, which is the part we have in common. I had posted a picture of a young boy who had lost his policeman father to COVID-19, and I was accused of believing a hoax, that there is no such thing as the disease. One person said that libtards like me would do anything to get a, get this word, demon rat elected. Another one said, it's a liberal lie and the only good Democrat is a dead one. And yes, this was Bible journaling Christians using this language against a fellow believer. I posted a video of a young black boy, a gospel singer, performing a song that he wrote himself called, I Just Want to Live. And I received more vitriol than I ever thought was possible about the prayer of a child. And yes, this was received from Christians. But it's not the attacks on me that made me back off on social media. It was seeing the family of God reach out with a fist to counter others in the comments sections. I felt like I had provided a platform for believers to sin. And I closed comments on those posts. My pastor's gotten the same attacks that I have from both sides. If he posts a picture of George Floyd, he's accused of using left-wing talking points. And if he posts about keeping protests peaceful, he's told he's complicit in police violence. I so badly want to defend him. He is a kind and prayerful man seeking what God wants him to do as our leader. And he's getting those attacks. It made me feel better that it wasn't just me. But it doesn't make me feel one iota better that this is what we're showing to the world. What in all of that is going to draw anyone to Christ? Who wants to join a family that's reaching out with fists and insults, both on the world and on their own family members, instead of an open hand of welcome? The church herself is a spectrum of voices, just like the world is. I think far too many assume that because we or our family or our church have always supported one party, one set of policies, we've worn one, one color hat 
all the time. Well, that that's the way all Christians must agree to be. But it's not. What we have in common is Jesus. Our guide is the Bible. We don't look to a party, a president, a platform, a TV or radio station, or an approach to public policy to decide what's right. We have the Holy Spirit. But in order to know what God wants us to do, we need to be in the Word. We need to remember what is a salvation issue, Jesus, and extend others' grace beyond that. It's time to show the world how to love those who are unlike us, to grieve with the grieving, even while our hearts haven't experienced what theirs have, to deeply listen, not to just answer with, well, I hear you, but here's where you're wrong, to love people right where they are, just as Jesus loved us in the midst of our own messiness. We can love others in the midst of theirs and let Jesus do the fixing. I was inspired to create this page by a Bible journaler in our Facebook group. Her page made me absolutely weep as I read the names that she wrote, and I researched the story of each one. And I felt her heart, and I began to understand the treasure that each one of those names represents in her community. I'm a white woman who hasn't lived her experience but I can still grieve along with her and with all of those who lost someone to this kind of violence. So on my page, like hers, I've written the names. They're saved in a bottle by the one who collects our tears in a jar in heaven. He knows each one of them by name. He knows those who grieve them by name. He's the God who sees the pain. He sees the injustice. And he's the only one who can heal it. I wrote the names in black light, invisible ink, not because I want to hide the names, but knowing that this jar carries many, many more with it from generations gone by. We live in a tension between competing ideas, priorities, and yes, worldly issues, but showing others the love of Christ is our calling. That love is learned from standing on the one true firm foundation found in scripture. Jesus Christ and him crucified. 